Psalms chapter 95. Oh, come. It's an interesting word in the Bible. Come. Come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Right now, during the church age, God says, come. Men go. God tells the Christian, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Christians stay. Let us sing unto the Lord. There we go. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock. Paul says that rock is Jesus. Of our salvation, the salvation is of Jesus. Jesus means Jehovah saves. Jesus, though he has just been born, yet, has always been the second member of the Trinity. Before Genesis 1-1, there was Jesus. He just wasn't born. A member of the Trinity, the second part of the Trinity, Jesus has always been. In the Old Testament, you'll find him as the, the angel of the Lord. Let us come... And that led us, is interesting because we're going to go in the book of Hebrews, Lord willing. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Now in the Old Testament, for the Jewish, for come before his presence is you're standing there at the, at the veil of the temple. Or the tabernacle before Solomon. And you've got the brazen altar with the offering you got the labor then you got this building with it with a veil the holy place the table of showbread the the candlestick and the the altar of incense then you got another veil which is the holy of holy the ark of the covenant the mercy seat and you are in god's presence now it's too bad many baptists think and many Religious that oh when I go to church building, we're in the presence of God. You ain't not in the presence of God if you go to Catholic church. And I guarantee somewhere in the world there are Baptist churches that are cold and absent of God's presence. Always have or many years so. It's the lie of the seeing church days that Jesus Christ is standing outside the church. Knocking. We're to come before God with thanksgiving. Praising God. Make a joyful noise unto him with song. Your song book. There it is. You can't sing. The Bible says that's no excuse. Can't play an instrument. Well, in the presence of God, a joyful noise. For the Lord, let's get, some, let's get some doctrine here. For the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, is a great God. Yes, he is. And a great capital K. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Revelation 19, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Lord is a great God and a great King. That's Jesus Christ. Again, throw the Jehovah Witnesses out the window. There it is. Above all gods. And the Bible takes it for granted that there is God. And the Bible takes it for granted that there's gods. There are gods. And one day, one day those gods will bow the knee before God and proclaim, Thou art the Lord. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. 
For God's in the hills and God's in the valley. God has been in the deepest part of the earth. That that uh, that trench that's in the Pacific Ocean. I can't think of the name of it. Where man's got to said mechanical thing. God has been and seen the wreck of the Titanic, and man needs to merciful to go see it, and God doesn't need it. God and Jesus Christ went into hell. Though that's a strange and awkward doctrine for many, but Jesus Christ went into hell, the deepest part of all the earth, deposited our sins, walked across that gulf, went over to Abraham's bosom, said, hey, here I am. The sea is his. He made it. A creator, creation. And his hand formed the dry land, Genesis 1. Not the Big Bang, not evolution. Oh, come. Let us worship and bow down. Let the knee let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, our creator. Now, no evolution is going to bow their knee before the creator because they'll bow the knee before the Big Bang or the monkey man. Or they'll bow the knee before Darwin, but not to God because they don't believe God's the maker. So there goes theistic evolution out the window. And now there's expression. The Lord our maker, there it is out of the Bible. Israel. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And the sheep of his hand. That's Israel. John chapter 10. The sheep of John chapter 10 is the nation of Israel. It's the church. It says in John chapter 10, other sheep I have. Let's see, John chapter 10. Let's look at what the Bible says and not what I have to say. Israel is called the sheep of God. Jesus is called the shepherd. As far as the church, we're kind of sheep, but Romans chapter 10. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd, Jesus. I know my sheep, Israel, and I am known of mine. Verse 16, and other sheep, there's a church I have, which are not of this fold, Israel. But secondary, <laughs> we're sheep. Majority is the nation of Israel. Today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your hearts as a provocation that is to excite anger, to cause resentment, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, sold my word. Who is that talking about? Verse 7 is a key. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Who is verse 7 about? It's about the nation of Israel. What is verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? Do you recognize that? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. Who is Hebrews reading to? Duh. What's the book say? Hebrews. I call the Hebrews written to the, to the tribulation saints. Some say Hebrews are saved, and that's two avenues. Maybe you can spiritualize Hebrews that are saved in the church age. But there's a lot of tribulation passages that don't go with the church. What do you do with those passages? Hebrews 3, 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, 
the Holy Ghost say it. Well, wait a minute. Stay there. I'll go. Back. I'll come back here for a moment. Holy Ghost say it. Are you telling me that Psalm ninety five is written by? It's unnamed. It says the Holy Spirit saith, today if you will hear his voice. Psalms 95 says, today if you hear his voice. Who is that? Scripture with scripture, that's the Holy Spirit. Read on. Harden not your hearts as the provocation. In the day of temptation in the wilderness. Who's the wilderness? I know they got some stories and, and hymns about the church in the wilderness. That's not Bible. There's one group of people that went to the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me. Who is that? Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. And saw my works 40 years. That's Israel. When I was grieved with that generation and said... They do all err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So shall I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Well, that's written by the inspiration. Whoever wrote Hebrews, it's told to us, it's written by the Holy Ghost to a group of people called the Hebrews that were in the wilderness that disobeyed God. It's the history of the Hebrews. Back to, back to the song. My thoughts and teaching, and I'm not going to say it's wrong for, for Hebrews, the church age, say, but it's more for the Hebrews in the tribulation period. Today, if you hear my voice, that's what Hebrews said. That's what this said. Hebrews doesn't say verse 7. But where it comes from, Psalm 95, it's talking about Israel, verse 7. And it tells us the Holy Spirit said this. Today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your hearts as a provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. That's Israel, history. When your fathers, those with Moses and Aaron, Joshua, Caleb, and all that, I'm not saying those, I'm saying the men that were with them. When the ten spies came back outside of Joshua and Caleb, brought the bad news. When they're in the wilderness, it's like, oh, we need water, oh, we need food, oh, can God provide a table in the wilderness? That's what we're talking about. When Moses had to put that brazen serpent up and look and live. We're going back into that time with the tribulation period with the children of Israel. Moses is coming back. The law is coming back. The temple's coming back. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my work, there's countless the water, the food, the manna, the rock, we saw in verse 1. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation. God being grieved. The Bible says, he, that grieve not the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And said, is the people that do err in their heart. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. They did not have faith in God. They did not believe in God. They just wanted a happy-go-lucky land. They wanted to go to their adventure park and have all the rides and get all the candy and all the hot dogs, and they wanted it free. As far okay, now let's have fellowship with God and let's study it. No, I don't, we don't want to do that. Listen, I've been in many churches. I've been in churches where, all right, we're not going to have Sunday evening service, but after Sunday morning service, we're going to have a fellowship. And it's funny how many people show up for the fellowship afterwards and they were not in the church service prior. We had Sunday morning church. Boom. 
After Sunday, everybody prepare, get all the stuff and the potatoes and everything ready and all. And then boom, there's so many more people for the fellowship than there was for the service. Nothing wrong with that. And they have not known my ways. Jesus said, I'm the way. All right, you want to spiritual, spiritualize it with the church. There are many people in church. There have been many people in church. And there will be many people in church. And they don't know anything about God. They're doing church because it's their obligation. Or they feel God would be pleased because I'm here today. Or I'm going. Some people say, I'm going to heaven. Why? Because I belong to a church. I've given money to a church. I attend church. And they don't know the way of the Lord, the life, and the truth, Jesus Christ. As these Israelites, they are the children of God. God spoke to them. God gave them miracles. And still, they were absent of God and not with their heart. Unto whom I, God, swear in my wrath. They should not enter into my rest. And we read that in Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3 is saying to the Hebrews. Don't you do dare do what your father told you to do. God. Sorry about it. God told your fathers. Do not err in your heart. You don't know who I am. And you're not going to enter that rest. Now. Okay. Let's take the book of Hebrews. Let's apply it to what the application is. You got to save Hebrew. And if he backslides and he goes against God with his heart, are you saying that he won't get the rest of New Jerusalem? Because the people we're talking about Psalm 95 didn't get the rest. They didn't get the land. Listen, if you're saved in the church age, you're always saved. I'll never depart from you. I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. You're signed, sealed. Into, even if you sin the ultimate sin. You can't lose your salvation. Hebrews is following up on, Hebrew, on Psalms 95 where don't do what your fathers did or you're not going to get that rest. Danger. Well, he, we're looking back to what their fathers done and as a precaution. And then as a precaution, if they do go against God, and they'll be coming up apart in Hebrews saying, you know, I, I forget what it says, but, you know, if they had tasted the, the great salvation of God and have forsaken it. I forget what it said. What do you do there? When Hebrews looks to the fact is you could lose your soul. And yet the New Testament church, you can't lose it. Then you go flubbing and drooping and guffing and, and sliving. You can lose your soul in the tribulation period and do right. You can. Not during the church age. You apply Hebrews and Psalms 95 to the tribulation and the Old Testament. That's where it'll fit. That's the only place. These people did not enter the rest. Hebrews says they did not enter my rest. Jesus said to those that endure to the end in Matthew. That's not church age. That's tribulation. I can quit right now. I can tell God that's it. I'm done. No more witnessing. No more gospel tracks. I'm going to go out. I'm going to live where I want to live. I'm going to live how I want to live. I, I don't care about the Bible no more. I don't care about church no more. I, I was saved in April 21st, 1987. But Lord, that's it. I'm done. And I can die and still be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I can, I can have the rapture happen and still go up. There are these people that did not go into the promised land. And there will be tribulation Jews that will not make it to the millennium. One, one thing, they received the mark. 
If a Jewish man receives the mark, he's not going into the rest. When you read about those, there are plagues in the tribulation period. Specifically for those that receive the mark. In the name of the beast. I, and I'm not going to say anybody else is wrong because I'm not in a position, but I teach Hebrews is for the tribulation. You can spiritualize it, but what do you do with this one? Here are Hebrews that did not make their end. They did not go to the promised land. Hebrews written to a tribulation Jew. You better, you better endure it to the end. You better make sure you do right for the whole time. Hate to have you go six years, 11 months, and 15 days and blow it the last 15 days and go off into eternity like a fire. That's not church age. 